Hey, good evening, guys. We're out here in the feedlot with this uh, corn. We have planted here on uh, April 25th, and it's really come along nice. Hope everybody had a great day. We got a pretty nice stand so far. And it's getting some nice dark color to it, finally. Hey, good evening. So we're just out here checking things over, finishing out the evening. A lot of stuff uh, happened today here, and I'll fill you in with the little things and finish out with a video here probably by the weekend. I had the state police here today on this uh, check. So we got that pretty much resolved. The corn is coming along really nice. The camera doesn't show it. I don't know if you guys, it looks a little on the yellow side, but it's coming with a nice green tent to it. But then you can see it starting to green up nicely. We'll grab that uh, nitrogen we put down. We put down about 13 and a half, 14 gallon, two inches off the row. This is planted. Hey, thanks. JDS, all things weather. Hope you had a great day. Um, we put down a 13 half 14 gallon. Well, you don't want to get it too close to the root base, it'll burn it. So, you want to stay two inches away so that it doesn't go in right away and it burn the brand new little hairs coming out of the, the first little root. You burn that, you'll set your corn back or you'll lose population. So that's why we put it, the disc or set off two inches from the row. We're back. So then, then your root's going to come over here and grab the nitrogen. It should, the nitrogen should be about two inches away. And then that's going to get some heat. And they'll take off pretty quickly. But I'm really happy with the population there. Spacing looks really nice. I think it's going to have a good chance here to take off for 2019 growing season. All right, from the corn back to today, the state police were here. And... Uh, it was kind of funny. It was comical. The guy was still emailing me. He said he's going to come pick this item up by the weekend. And so then the state trooper, he was playing along a little bit. And then finally, I don't know if I can copy the, what he was texting. He had my phone and he was uh, voice texting the, the guy um, out in, uh, well, this guy was actually from New Jersey. Uh, where he was calling from. So the uh, Blackwell, Officer Blackwell, took over the uh, phone conversation with this guy and told him, so this is Officer Blackwell, will you call in and uh, we'll have a conversation. Um, he wanted to call into the state troopers barracks in Harrisburg. The guy goes in the email and goes, really? W what's wrong? And uh, <laughs> so I'll finish a video out with that, but the state police took over and that's all, that's all I'm going to say now, but we'll do an update on the, the check and the, just trusting people like that just drives me nuts. But yeah, anyway, so that's behind us. I'll do a little update video on that. Uh, we were down at deer country and uh, or this whole process is coming together a little faster than I like here but it's coming together um, we're gonna we're gonna be putting a pretty good sized power unit on front of that baler and uh, it's gonna take a little time to put everything together but we hope to be uh, in the field here in the next couple days so spring is coming so we got to get ready 
So I'm really happy with this field of corn. We'll go over here to this other one. And it looks yellow, but it's nice and has a nice dark tint to it there. Uh. This corn here is coming up. You can see it, the rows there, maybe not. Hey, good evening, Ken. Can't see the rows as good as this one. They're coming. You can see them here, I guess. Camera doesn't always pick it up. Now, these look a little yellower. And that's the cold, and it didn't hit the uh, nitrogen yet. And a lot of, we had a lot, quite a bit of rain here the other day. Yeah, I'm real, real happy with uh, even uh, a merge of the plant. You want that uniform... You want that uniform uh, emergent. So, I don't know if we'll be able to plant any corn on Friday yet here or not. Maybe Saturday. Um, the ground's wet here. It's just starting to dry out again. Well, I'll tell her, he said, uh, Happy Mother's Day. It's coming. It's, it's, yours just seems like it's flying by and it's not warming up. Some guys are having trouble getting corn planted. Uh, I noticed uh, some guys are running out west right now. So. But. Beef cattle are happy for the night. <laughs> Rick, <laughs> three to five inches of snow. That's crazy. I forget where you're actually from, Rick. Uh, I have to get to learn your last name. Um, how to pronounce it, I guess. Eastern uh, Minnesota, e East Central Minnesota. So things are pretty peaceful around here. The corn's looking good. Uh, we'll make videos as, as we go along. Uh, like pork. <laughs> How's the cattle doing on the new feed? They're doing really well. They're changing like from day and night. You have to give me a call someday, Rick. And then I'll, you can say your name to me. <laughs> oh, tree leaves are just about full. We they already went through their uh, flowering process already. It's too dark to get down the cattle anymore down there, but they really enjoy it. Another thing I want to talk about, you know, John Deere. There's a lot of good equipment out there, guys, but it all comes down to service. And uh, Deer Country is an excellent company to work with. Uh, I talked to a guy down in near, near Oxford, uh, PA, and uh, just just an absolutely good company to work with. Uh, service is number one. Um, quality. A lot of dealers are making good quality equipment, but it comes down to service anymore. So I'm really happy with that uh, skid loader. Um, I'm excited to keep working with John Deere and um, bring you guys along. And uh, they're not cheap. It's not cheap equipment. No, it's not cheap equipment. I, I know to tell you that right now, but it's good stuff. When you have an excellent service team, sales team, 
it just works out. Um, some of you guys remember some of the things uh, prior to the John Deere coming. Hello from Rhode Island. Welcome. Um, it's just John Deere has been an excellent, excellent to be working with. And I'm not just saying it. So happy farms. Welcome. We were just out checking the corn. The corn looks really nice. The high was 70 here today. And uh, I guess there's some showers coming in in the weekend, maybe. But we're getting ready for the big uh, bailing season to come. So, a lot of exciting stuff. And there's a lot of people want to see what's going to happen. And so, as I put the videos out, um, we'll bring you along. And... Uh, one thing in farming, you can't just sit still. You've got to constantly go forward, change with the markets. So, <laughs> yep, they're coming. And, and uh, Rick, we're just going to have fun. Anybody that wants to be a part of it. I'm going to repeat this. It's not about how many bales you can knock out in a day. Uh, my my goal is to see how we can handle each challenge comes through our day. Uh, trust me, I've been bailing with small square balers. I bailed with a gas motor on a baler, and there was challenges and rain, storms, things breaking, things flying apart. But it's got to be more on how can we handle and overcome things like that. Anybody can go through and pound bales through a baler and say whoop de doo It's on how we handle the situations what I want to do. And some people might not like it. They don't need to watch it. But um, uh, I, I didn't get where I'm at today by just going out and spending money. And it's, it takes hard work. And I'm putting myself out there again. And, you know, I might just fall on the flat on my face and you guys can sit back and laugh about it. But, but the moral of the story is anybody can, any baler, round bale, square bale, small square bale, old balers, it's just we want to see how it interacts and then we're going to let you guys how we handled each situation. And, and you guys get to, you get to judge what, how each person, and it's not going to be the biggest, shiniest baler, the biggest fields. It's going to be how we handled each situation. And there's a lot of young farmers and farmers that have, you know, older balers and they say, well, I'm ashamed to show that baler. But you guys, you just put what you want to put on there as far as how you handle the situation if you have a baler blow apart put it on there and we get to watch you guys put it together on in the field um if you have to call for a service how fast did your service uh, team come to fix the baler uh, i i could have a brand new baler and i could go out and pound 10 15 bales through and i could blow it apart you know how so Anyway, that's where we want to go with that, uh, Rick. And I uh, hope you do come along and, and just show the challenges. And, and what we'll do is when the bailing season comes to an end and you got three or four clips in this video series, um, we'll let the viewers, I mean, and they can vote which guy, which, you know, which channel. If you don't even have a channel, anyone can do it. Uh, there's local people. So... To me, it's not all about the big bail count because anybody can do that. Anybody can write a big check out or finance it and go out and bet us. But to point to me, that is not farming. Farming is just a hard sweat um, and overcoming the frustrations of what goes on in the farming industry. Exactly, Rick. So... I just want to have fun with it. And uh, we show day-to-day -day on life here on the farm, what goes on. 
And there's not too much excitement when we're not in full swing, working for other people, running the roads. Um, you just, you know, you, you, you have your over every day feeding cattle and stuff like that, but, uh, just uh, don't get too exciting around here until we get in full swing in, uh, the season and that's coming fast. So, around here I'm just changing things around. We're changing the operation. We want to change with the times. Um, the 3x3 baler is a great baler. Uh, it's just, the guys want less bales on the field. I mean, this is what they're asking for. And this is what I'm hearing. Less bales on the field. The 3x4 is stacked nicer. Our Amish don't care about the size anymore. Uh, when we started making 3x3 three three bales, the Amish would like, oh, we can't buy that. We only want small bales. But you build a relationship with them, and um, they know they're getting quality hay. And if I have a, a customer that's not happy with a load of hay, I put a warranty on it. And I'll say, I'll bring it back if you're not happy. And I'll replace it with bales if there's a bad bale. And I'll feed them to my beef cattle. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, to keep the customers happy and uh, but there's a lot of things I don't show online because it's business and if everybody done things like the way I do them uh, I, would I would lose out on some of my niche marketing um, not that I don't want anybody to do it but they didn't no one showed me how to do it and I just became the way I am uh, just showing the things that what goes on in the farm um, so to me, all I, anybody that wants to come along this year, you know, there will be a cash prize at the end, and that's that's coming out of my pocket. Uh, whoever get voted the number one uh, for going through all the trials. So it's not about green paint, red paint, white paint. It's not about any of that. I don't care what bailer you're pulling. It's how you handle each situation. So I talked long enough about that. So, and I, Dale, I hope I'm making the right decisions. You know, I will look back, and, and that's why I'm telling you guys, you're going to come along, and if the carpet is pulled out underneath my feet, I'm not disappearing. I have a commercial license. I have my CDL. I have a medical card. I'm ready to go drive truck. I mean, whatever it takes. There she is. Hopefully you'll get the John Deere baler. I could have it here probably tomorrow if I wanted it to here tomorrow. Um, it's going to go through the shop, I'm sure, in a little bit of this. But I'm going to take you along. We go down there. We're going we're gonna to go along together. And um, I'm going to probably do one live once or something, you know. But mostly it'd be in videos and uh, you guys get to see what's going on. So if you are any farmers and you want to be a part of it and have fun, you know, send me an email. And uh, there's ways of different ways of contacting me. You can email me through bkangus25 at gmail.com. Um, some of you guys have my phone number, but, you know, I'd rather have an email first or a text. Hey, Matthew. Um, when I was 13 old, I was stacking small bales and fell down after three days because of my dad. I was so sick. I, I know exactly what you're saying there, so. <laughs> so. The sun's going down again. It's a nice, nice calm even evening here on the farm. And uh, Rick, uh, uh, if you want to call me, you can send me an email. I'll give you my number. And if I don't answer sometimes, I'd rather just have an email and then that's how I start. And then a text. Texting is always the best for me. Um, if everybody would call me at once, I would never get anything done. So... Hey, Scott. 
Thank you for putting that out there. Uh, 609. Maryland 609. Farmer, what I was trying to say is right or wrong decision his to make the farm grow right. I, I knew exactly what you're saying there, Dale. I knew exactly what you're saying. I was just saying, you know, I, I don't, you know, I have no one to blame to what I do or don't do. or. But what I look at is I have a short... Now, I enjoy small square bales too, Steve. Um, is it Steve or Steven? I'm not sure there. I enjoy small bales. Trust me, we made small bales every year here. The calf hutches are nice to, or working with the calves. <laughs> Peppy says, I'll be lucky to plant by Memorial Day. The ground's too wet. One thing, once the weather warms up, it will dry out quick. You got to do what you got to do. That's right. Um, times are changing. Uh, the operations are getting bigger. The operations are getting bigger, so everything is getting bigger. Uh, the small farms are leaving, and uh, the mass farms are getting bigger. And it's, you know, these young guys that want to start out with, you know, a couple acres, 20, 30 acres, you have to have a real niche market to make it. And, um, like I said, I don't have all the answers, but you got to do what you enjoy. I'm looking at a John Deere compact here in a year or so. The, another thing, you guys can go on uh, Deer Country's website. They'll help plan the right tractor for you. Excellent team down there on the compact side. And, uh, they're not just wanting to sell something you don't want. Um, so that's one thing. And a lot of dealers are out there to help you. I'm not just, you know, I'm, I'm talking about John Deere because, you know, I dealt with them and I'm, I'm happy with them. So Massachusetts still wet. Yeah, I just I thought I'd share that with a check there. You guys can just come in and go back and watch the beginning there. Um, that pretty much is over now. The guy hasn't contacted me anymore. We had a kind of a good laugh about it, and nobody lost any money, and hopefully the next person don't get ripped off. But if you guys didn't see that uh, video about, uh, you know, fraud, bank fraud, bank check fraud, Go back and check it out because it is real and uh, don't take anybody's word and it's hard to do because there's a lot of great people out there yet but at the same time you know a few thousand dollars out of your checking account can really set you back so just because someone sends you a check doesn't mean it's always going to be good and don't let merchandise leave until you know for sure so well, I think it's time to call tonight, and we have a busy day tomorrow, and it looks like a nice day yet, I think. Yeah, when you... And, Pappy, I still did that, too, a few years ago. I made a lot of deals with a handshake, but I got burnt. And, uh, and, and things change for everybody. Not everyone knows their situation, and sometimes people are afraid to talk about the situation they're in. And it's better to burn somebody than try to go and try to make things right. Um, we all go through rough times. You know, I go through more than enough. So, we'll, we'll keep bringing you guys along and um, we'll talk to you later. And thanks again for just stopping in and saying hi and, um, and let's have a good year. Let's make 2019 a great year. So, I will, Rick. So, thanks for stopping, everybody. And uh, don't forget to go back out and check some of the videos. Ford guy, how you doing tonight? I don't know if I said hi or not, but uh, 
Make sure I take time to say hi to you. The videos will continue to come, good or bad. We'll try to make the best of it. Have a great evening, guys. Thanks for stopping.